was a group of people that can initiate the Venus Project in some way. And the Venus Project's about making things abundant and available for people. And if they see it's a higher standard of living for them, they would most likely accept it after things crash and they can't mm -hmm. eat and they don't have any place to live and they have no job. Yeah. Well, we all know that to make big change, it's so much easier after chaos. Yeah. Like uh, right. in Hurricane Katrina, the companies went in there, privatized all the schools, no problem. But and if there wasn't a direction to work toward, if there isn't another alternative, and I don't see any other alternative out mm -hmm. there that's yeah. updated with our science and technology for the benefit of people, not for the benefit of industries and corporations mm -hmm. as it is today, but for the benefit of people and the well-being of the environment, then we're not going to make it. We'll turn right into fascism. So the mm -hmm. more that people understand this direction, that there is another direction to work towards, yeah. and not people who misunderstand it and think that the Rothschilds or one world government has, it's, it's funny to us that, it's because it's so much the opposite, they haven't looked into it at all, mm -hmm. then we might have some chance of some kind of sane, sustainable future. Sure. I think what, what many people worry about, Roxanne, is um, that your, the Venus Project plans are very appealing to whichever people are left after the massive fight out. And I, I think it's very appealing. But say if I am living, say if after the collapse of society, which I believe needs to happen, I, I hate this manufactured slave yeah. society we live in, and I think all the technology, all the luxury we have is built on lies and murder. Okay. And we, on the, yeah. We had another yeah. problem. Okay. Um, what was my question? Oh my God, I forgot my question in my ranting. Um, yeah, the, the Venus Project would seem appealing, but would people in the Venus Project be happy if I took all the people back into the jungle and lived away from your society? Like, uh, is it possible for there to be two the ways? The jungle, there's so many people on Earth today, I think that you're trying to ask a deeper question than that. Mm -hmm. Who makes the decisions in the future? Yeah. Who decides which way people ought to live? The carrying capacity of the environment, you know what that means? Yeah. If an environment can support so many animals, if the altered environment by earthquakes, the water goes into the ground, mm -hmm. most animals will die. So we study the carrying capacity of the earth and how many people do we have on it. And if we do use all the earth's resources, can we wipe out poverty? Can we build hospitals instead of digging up nickels and dimes for medical research? We, so far, up to now, we still have more than enough resources, even with all our waste Mm -hmm. and war. Now if you take the world cost of World War II, I'm talking about bombing England, bombing Germany, flattening it out, 400 ships on the bottom of the sea, thousands and millions of dead people, and just take the money that it cost to build to fight that war, you could have housed everybody on earth, wiped out the slums all over the world, mm -hmm. built hospitals all over the world. There's something wrong with our culture. There's something wrong with all your bullshit mathematicians that are always doing higher plane mathematics. That's why I don't like this guy in the wheelchair that is interested in particle behavior. If you were a scientist, why do people kill each other? Yeah. Get out of that goddamn field. I don't give a shit about whether the planet moves and oscillates in an orbit while the world is going to hell. Yeah, let's, let's get our priorities right. Now. Yeah. Yeah. You, does, does that answer your question? Yes, there it does. There are problems now. Yeah. Be, and I don't want to go to the moon because mm -hmm. we start going to other planets, mm -hmm. the next war will be out there. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to learn to live together and go out in the space as a joint venture. Is mm -hmm. that acceptable? Yeah. I'm very much against any single nation going out there. Well, absolutely, because it's just an act Where of separation. Where do we disagree? Well, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Um, I um, and this is a question for Roxanne as well. Um, I sometimes, when I think of the whole terror that people have of depopulation, and there's a trust called the Optimum Population Trust. Uh, the Council on Foreign Relations talks about the unsustainability. The UN Agenda 21 talks about depopulation being. Maybe we all know as a species, as a collective subconscious, that the way we're living now is totally untenable. If the three and a half billion Indian and Chinese want an American lifestyle, this planet will last maybe another 20 years. So we all know that the system maybe even needs think, to collapse. I think you know more than they do. 
if they can, if you can impart that information, some people know this much, some know that mm. much, so they don't all really know, and they think that somehow our government looks after us. They have false beliefs, or God won't let it happen. Yeah. Jesus will come down first. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they have misinformation, and that divides us. Mm -hmm. So it's my job when I talk to priests and ministers, I turn them around. I've changed many different ministers yeah. to agnostics, not atheists. But I've changed them so that they no longer believe that Jesus is going to come down in the clouds. Yeah. And I tell them that those are little stories. And I, if you ever watch me talk to a group of people, I approach them differently. Knowing a little bit about their background, I change the tone. I don't, I don't talk to people to win approval. I talk to them by delivering what I know to be relevant, relatively so. Mm -hmm. And that I know that I myself, in two years, will be changed if I live that long. I'll change things. I think and you I, will live to 2012. I no fixed notion of <laughs> yeah. what the world ought to be. Yeah. It's a constantly, see the, these are called, the word for this type of society is called established. Mm -hmm. The society I talk about is called emergent. It's never established. It's always undergoing change. To where, I don't know. Because the next 40 years, with so many new inventions, I can't extrapolate. I can only to a limited extent. Mm -hmm. The Venus Project isn't perfect. It's just a hell of a lot better. And it's a start, mm -hmm. working, bringing the world together. I'd rather attempt that than go down in flames mm -hmm. with society. No, absolutely. Why do so many people use the word cult when talking about the Venus Project or because they the Zygos? Because they read the book. If they read the book yeah. and they say, your society has insufficiencies, I say, like what? Well, your beams aren't thick enough to hold up the building. Give me information. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you want to stop cars from hitting you. How would you, I know how to do that. I know how to put up houses automatically. I designed one of the earliest prefabricated houses. Mm -hmm. It was exhibited at Warner Brothers Studios. They charged, I think it was $3 a piece for people just to look at it. And that money went to the Hart Fund. Mm -hmm. You can look it up. Everything new was ridiculed and laughed at in the beginning. When the Wright brothers were de developing the plane, the, the, the scientists of the time... Established, yeah. Right, well, the, all of them were saying that man can't fly, but the Wright brothers never read those books, so they went right ahead and built the flying machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't listen to what people say when they call it names and it can't happen, because if you listen to that, there'd be nothing new. Yeah. Do you think, Jacques, the, the power of love could ever overcome the love of power? Well, that's a quote I've heard many times. First of all, the word love doesn't mean the same thing as different people. So I always ask, well, what do you mean by love? I'm going to tell you what that love will crash and a new word will come in. It's called extensionality. If you meet a person with six arms, you might say, eh, what the hell is that? He says, I can pet a dog, eat soup, scratch my back, and shake hands with my brother-in-law. But people don't do that. They go, I know something I'd like to do with my spare hands. Okay. All that, but. okay. So the point is, when people use the word love, they use it in the context of the civilization and experience that they have. Yeah. In the future, when people meet, a guy is going to see how extensional that person will be to him, and they will associate with one another because of extensionality. Meaning, if you met people that taught you how to grow food faster, healthier, how to live healthier, if you realized what they were doing, you would tend to associate with people that were extensional. The word love has so many different meanings, so many different people, we would rather use extensionality. So when I told the aircraft industry, you can break a flat spin by turning your wind tapes into the wind. Mm -hmm. When I told them you can get airplane tires to turn, they loved it, but the tire companies didn't like it. Of course Did you not. Understand that? Yeah, because it affected their sales. You oh. need less tires. So you gotta, that's why you have to concern yourself with many different aspects mm -hmm. of yeah. the social system. Okay. Well, I personally, I think.